WTTNHD production live here with author Dan Hennessy of with with the snap of a glove this book here Dan can you tell me about how you found out and when that you had prostate cancer and what your reaction was to it well Katie in 2005 I was a 49 year old typical man who really avoided um, prostate issues really because I didn't know what a prostate was so it really wasn't anything that I should, in my mind, be concerned about. Um, I had avoided the tests. I just, you know, I felt fine. I was physically fit. I ran. I played golf. I played hockey. So really, I felt good. Mm -hmm. And um, it was only because my wife suggested that I maybe change doctors and go to the doctor that she was seeing at the time. And uh, it was during one of the physicals that I had with him that he developed, uh, or he actually noticed that there was an issue with the uh, with my prostate, and uh, immediately sent me off to a urologist, who again verified his findings, and, uh, and then wound up doing a biopsy, which eventually, you know, determined that I had prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And what was your first reaction? Were you in utter shock, or, you know? Yeah, well, you know, I was home with my uh, little girl, who was a little under a year old, and I was feeding her supper. And it was really, um, it was a comedy of errors because if, if anything could go wrong during this whole process, it went wrong. Um, they did the biopsy and they did it on the beginning of December 2005, but because of holidays and that type of thing, I wasn't able to find out the results until January. Uh, still, in my mind, I thought, I'm fine. But I did get a call and I was feeding my daughter and uh, I answered the call and he said, I got the results back. And he said, it's positive you have prostate cancer. And I still remember to this day that feeling. It's almost like all of the blood leaves your body and you immediately become cold. And, um, and I looked back at my daughter and I looked at the phone in my hand and I looked back at my daughter and I said, I'm going to beat this and it's because of you and you need me around. And um, I immediately asked the doctor, what do you want to do? And he said, you're 49 years old, you're healthy. I recommend that because of the stage that it was in, we operate and take out the prostate. Mm -hmm. Wow, and your entire journey is covered in this book. It, it began as, as a very therapeutic um, event for me. I sat down and started to write. And it was really just to get my feelings out and just try to, uh, to capture some of the things that, that happened and some of the emotions that went through. Because there were so many things. C cancer has no conscience. Cancer does not care what you're doing. Cancer does not care if your life is good or bad or indifferent. It really doesn't care. Um, I had a very normal, what I considered a normal life. Uh, once I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, um, my mother was also diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer and immediately put in palliative care. So I was dealing with that issue in addition to dealing with my journey and battle through prostate cancer. So I thought it was really important to, to let people know that there's no such thing as a normal journey through cancer. And it's, and it's I'm dealing with prostate cancer, but a lot of the similarities through all cancers are the same. How you feel when you get the diagnosis, how it affects your family, like I, I call the family the collateral damage of cancer, which they really are. Even though I'm dealing with it physically, the family deals with it emotionally and it's a journey for them just as well as the cancer patients. Has having this journey really changed your life and your perspective on on day-to-day -day living and maybe your goals and, and whatnot? Absolutely. There's a section in my book, it's called uh, Reflections, and somebody actually asked me, they said, do you ever wish you had never gotten prostate cancer? And I can't answer that with a yes or a no. It's, it's not something that I would stand in line to try to get into that club, trust me. It's, it's, if it could avoid it, I'll avoid it. But because I've, I've dealt with this, um, it has changed my life. It's changed my perspective on things that need to be talked about. Um, it, it, it's changed my perspective on how it affects your life. Um, we have a little girl, Grace, who is now four years old, she'll be five uh, in, in August. She was conceived through in vitro fertilization because after my surgery, we were no longer able to have children. Uh, my wife was actually pregnant when I was diagnosed. So we thought, okay, well maybe we'll have three children. And uh, she actually had a miscarriage on the day I had my surgery. So things happen through this journey for a reason. 
and grace was conceived through in vitro fertilization. So those are things that people that are going through this journey, this battle, need to know. Because there is hope. There is, there's things that will happen to you that you need to be prepared for. You, there's questions that you need to be able to ask. You need to know how to ask them and you need to know how to digest the information that comes back afterwards. And in those times when your wife had the miscarriage and you found out about your mom, what did you say to yourself to get through it? <laughs> There's an old adage that bad things happen in threes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did a quick count one day and I said, okay, that was three. If anything else happens, I'm going to give them a new address. If they can send those bad things next door, I can even give them somebody's name mm -hmm. because I had had enough. But again, you're only given, I truly believe, what you can handle. Mm -hmm. And if this, was, if this was the journey, the turn in my life that was going to happen, then it happened for a reason. Um, you know, I, it's, it's, I've, it's, it's gone from an, a, an ordinary life to an extraordinary life mm -hmm. because now my focus totally is awareness. I mean, prostate cancer, one in seven Canadian men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. But it's the most curable, treatable prostate or cancer out there mm -hmm. uh, if it's diagnosed early enough. So you're recommending that these men go and get themselves checked out? Stop being mm -hmm. stubborn. Mm -hmm. It takes seconds and it can change and save your life. Yeah. Uh, and in addition to the blood test and the physical exam is the best way of being able to, uh, to guard against it. Great. And what are your future aspirations? What are you working on now? Well, all I want to try to do now is, is try to expand the awareness of, of what I've done through my story. And uh, in addition to that, there are some uh, amazing organizations in Canada that have actually taken on this challenge and understood that this is a very serious situation. And these are major drug companies. So there's a, a website that's been uh, developed out there now that people really should take a look at. It's called IHaveProstateCancer.ca. Mm -hmm. uh, very amazing website that's been developed by a major drug company. And uh, so I think they're understanding. It's, it, it's all about awareness. It really is. Any other websites that we can check out? Well, my website is uh, www.snapofaglove.ca. And that has uh, lots of information about uh, prostate cancer. It also has some interviews that I've done, which you know will again give people a little bit of insight about who I am and, and why I'm doing what I do. And um, you can actually purchase the book uh, on the website. Right. Okay. So for your copy of With the Snap of a Glove, you can pick it up at chapters.ca. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you, Katie. I'm Katie Allman, reporting for TTN HD Production Live. Oh,